Hi, this is Chris Collins, and I'm going to show you how to use the Acoustica Studio Drums. Acoustica Studio Drums is a virtual instrument that comes with Mixcraft 6, and uh, it is pretty much what it says it is. It's Studio Drums, but it's actually got more than just uh, acoustic kits. It also has some electronic kits and some drum machines and things like that. So, let's get started. We'll select Build Virtual Instrument Tracks. So we have an instrument track to work with. Then we will bring up the instrument selection window for the first track by clicking the keyboard icon. Now if you click VSTI Instruments, you can see all the instruments that uh, you have installed on your computer. And listed here we see Acoustica Studio Drums. This is the one we want, so go ahead and select that. The details will pop out at the bottom and you can see Acoustica Studio Drums is selected. And if I expand this here, you can see all the different drum kits you have available within this virtual instrument. We have a couple of acoustic kits, some drum machines, electronic kits, and some other percussion we'll get to in a bit. Now, you can also access these drum sets through the Acoustica presets. If you scroll down to Percussion, Drum Kits, uh, select that and you, and you can see on the right we have the drum machine kits, electronic kits listed amongst the kits and some others that are part of the original Acoustica instruments. Down here we have the studio drums and upon selecting this preset you'll notice it's, so it's brought up the Acoustica studio drums instrument and it has the studio drum set which is the first uh, preset for this virtual instrument. One thing that's different, however, is we actually have an Acoustica EQ down here at the bottom. This is applied to the instrument. Um, I'll open this here so you can see. Um, we're adding a little bit of a bass boost to the low end. Gives that kick drum a little bit more punch. I will close this window now. So, how do you use these drums? Well, one way is to just start playing around on your keyboard. If you have a MIDI keyboard like I do here, you can just start hitting stuff and see what it does. Um, but, you know, uh, you can also see what the instruments are. Um, all you simply need to do is look at the piano roll view for an instrument clip. Well, we don't have an instrument clip recorded yet, so let's make one by right-clicking on the track and selecting Add Instrument Clip. Now you'll notice here on the left, there is uh, a, a list of different sounds. And these all correspond to different keys on the keyboard. Um, so you can see we have toms and kicks and snares and things like that in there. If I click on any of these, you can hear the corresponding sound. And if I use a pencil tool here to draw in the drums where I want them, put a couple bass and snare hits here, um, you, you, know, you can easily find your way around the kit to know which drums to put where you want them to be. What's also nice is if you play notes on your MIDI keyboard, um, you can see the appropriate drum light up. which is very nice, I think. So, essentially you could just stop right here and start playing with the kits if you want, but there are a few things I want to show you that will help you get the most out of these drum kits. With the Studio Drum Kit, we have some drums that are mapped to more than one key, such as the kick drums here, you can see uh, both the notes C and B, with the snare drums, either notes D or E. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, each snare drum hit sounds a little bit different from the other, which uh, helps us to avoid the machine gun effect that you get when you repeat the same sample over and over. Here is what the kick drum sounds like when I just repeat one of the keys. Now here's what it sounds like when I use both of the keys in alternation. It definitely sounds better having the two separate samples. And the same thing with the snare. Here's one sample. And here's both samples. The second benefit to mapping the same drum to two notes is that you can play notes in rapid succession. Not all of the drums that are mapped to two keys have separate samples, but you can still do rolls much easier by taking advantage of both keys. This is especially true for the toms and the cymbals.
And of course it makes tambourine rolls a cinch. The second thing I'd like to show you with the studio drums is the use of the mod wheel with the cymbals. There are two ways that we've sampled the crash cymbal. One is a standard hit that rings out, and the other is a choke on the cymbal, which is when the drummer hits the cymbal and then grabs it with his other hand, silencing the cymbal. Here's the normal crash cymbal. And here's the cymbal choke. However, the mod wheel can be used to choke the regular crash cymbal whenever you would like, even after it's been ringing for a while. Here's an example. One of the problems with sampled instruments is that they rarely capture all of the variety that the acoustic instruments can produce. A good example of this is the hi-hat. On an acoustic drum set, the hat can be closed, it can be open, but it can also be anywhere in between. It can be closed tightly, closed loosely, slightly opening, and drummers will use this middle ground to build intensity or to get a different sound. General MIDI drum mapping only allows for a closed hat, an open hat, and a hat play with a pedal. But with the Acoustica Studio drums, you can use the mod wheel to gradually open the hat from the closed position. This only works on the closed hi-hat sample, which is the note F sharp. Here it is in action. As I scroll up here, you can see a, a lot of other samples that are part of this kit. Here's the ride cymbal and its corresponding bell. We have the cross stick, we have a rim shot. We also have the snares off and tom rims. This kit has a lot more sounds than the ones we've explored, including congas, bongos, gyros, etc. I won't be going through all of them, but I do encourage you to spend some time playing around on your own. Let me show you some of the other drum kits as well. The heavy metal kit uses similar drum mappings to the studio kit, but there are a few differences. There are more toms, and not every tom is mapped to two keys. There are also no snare off samples or tom rims. Even though I've selected a different drum kit, you'll notice that the drum mapping hasn't been updated. All I need to do is click on the instrument clip once more and it will update the drum map for me. Now you can see the drum map has changed. The kick drums are the lowest samples in this kit. You'll also notice that instead of a rim shot, we have two keys for the cross stick. There are also more toms. We only have the mid tom one, which is mapped to two keys. The rest are only mapped to one. And there are a few other differences. Things such as the mod wheel tricks for cymbals still work with this kit. But since so much is similar, I'm not going to spend much time on this one. The drum machine and the electronic kits all have extra bass and snare samples so that you can mix and match to find the sound you're looking for. You see the five kick drums, and there are one, two, three, four snare drums here as well. I'm going to play around with these for a bit so you can hear for yourself all the possibilities. The great thing about having so many kick and snare drums within one kit is it's easy to find just the sound you're looking for.
Kit 2 has some drier sounds. Here's a taste of the electronic kits. These are just fun to play around with. Ooh, that sounds like 8-bit. Let's try this. Chip tune. Let's try another, shall we? All right, the last thing I'll show you in detail are the congas. There are three different congas, different sizes, and a real conga player would know which ones go on the left, the right, front, whatever. But we actually have open and slap samples for all three congas, plus a few additional samples for each as well. We do have the multi-samples, so you can, you can do rolls and you can avoid the machine gun effect. So here is the tumba. Here is the conga. And here is the quinta. And these are the open samples. And then here are the slaps. Here they are together. Real conga players would know, actually know what to do with this. I think this sounds like something you might play on a conga. I, I don't really know. And then we have a few extras like muffled toe and then some heel, conga heel. There's also a uh, timbali, bongo, pandiero, if you say it that way, cowbell, and then studio percussion kits. Um, the studio percussion has shaker, woodblock, uh, triangle, and some other things. So play around with those. Kind of learn where everything is so you know where to find the sounds you're looking for. And I'm going to follow up this video with another one on how to get uh, an even nicer drum sound. Crisper snares, punchier bass drums. At some point I'll link it here when I'm finished with it. In the meantime, happy music making. And this is Chris signing off.